When I was a child, if I wanted a new toy or gadget, I would build it. I pored over dog-eared copies of popular mechanics and made cameras, crystal radios, model airplanes, and ships. I was always building something. When I entered high school, I declared that I intended to become an electrical engineer. And nearly everyone, including those who cared about me, laughed, since no one had ever heard of a black engineer. My teachers directed me into vocational classes for repairing radios, and I was good at it. I would fix any radio in Topeka for $4 plus parts. But when I applied to the two in-state universities for engineering, I was denied admission because I hadn't taken the required math and science courses. At the time, I thought that was the worst thing that could happen to me. I had to enroll in a liberal arts college to take the courses I needed. And I ended up also taking courses like speech, history, economics, and English literature. Two years later, I found that I was the only minority student in my engineering school class. And when I graduated, I looked into the mirror and said to myself, I'm the first black engineer I have ever seen. For the first 20 years of my career, I worked in industry, in a Navy electronics lab, and in a university research and development facility. I later served as the director of the National Science Foundation and as president of a nonprofit organization where I worked to increase the participation of minorities in engineering. I also served as a provost, a chancellor, and as a president of a liberal arts college. Over my 60 years of experiences, I learned that many engineering projects marginalize poor and disadvantaged communities. Engineers often seem more interested in the process of building the bridge than how it impacts the people. I want to change that. My experiences in those early classes broadened my own knowledge and thinking, and I have come to believe that engineers need a broad education, not just training in math and science. I am convinced that the profession should draw on the humanities to become more socially responsive as well as more inclusive, both in terms of ways of thinking and who gets to participate. My colleague, Dr. Anthony Maddox, and I have created the new Center for Engineering in Education to address some of these issues. We believe that the engineering habits of mind, creativity, optimism, collaboration, communication, ethics, and systems thinking should be incorporated into the way we educate all people. This is what I want to build now.